All right. Um, let me just do a little switcheroo here. So welcome everybody to the, uh, as I said, the 2024 Jeopardy Steer Carcass Competition, our results webinar. We had planned to have a fantastic day for you somewhere in central Alberta. Um, and we were really looking forward to that. Unfortunately, the world had other ideas this year. So we're going to make do with what we've got uh, for you. And we'll hopefully you'll have a little bit of a learning experience and you'll get to see um, some, some pictures from the competition this morning. And hopefully you can join us again next year and we'll hopefully have better luck for a wrap up day. So just a quick overview of what's going to happen this morning. We'll go through um, our sponsor thank yous here real quick uh, because our program was impossible without them. Then we will have our grader, Oscar. He will give us a little bit of a presentation on grading and, and some thoughts on, on meat. Um, some pictures of some ribeyes he'll, he'll give some thoughts on. And then we will have Rod the chair of our committee give some comments and some overviews of our competition throughout the years, including this year. And finally, at the end, we'll make you wait all right to the end, uh, we'll have the announcement of the results of this year's competition. So where we were really excited about this year's competition, we had a, a quite a few uh, people join us for the first time, so that's exciting. We of course offered some learning opportunities for you over the year, and we hope you learned a little something throughout the year. So with that, um, we'll just do a quick uh, sponsor, thank you. So our 4-H Alberta program, they're made possible through the generous donations and supports of our sponsors and supporters. Uh, without them, we would not be able to provide the amazing fun youth programs that we do. So if you see them out in your community, please make sure to thank them. And it would also be great if you could write a thank you note uh, following this, the 4-H Alberta Steer Carcass Competition, and you can send that to the 4-H Center. When I send out the link for this, we will be recording it and putting it on YouTube. When I send out the link for that, I will also include the sponsor information and the mailing address for the center. Um, of course, if you can find any of these companies on social media, please feel free to tag them in that as well. Um, without further ado, our Emerald Clover sponsors for 4-H Alberta are Alberta Recycling, Altalink, ATB, Calgary's Stampede Foundation and UFA. So thank you very much for our Emerald Clover uh, supporters. And then I'm just checking to make sure you guys can see my screen. All right. Um, our Gold Clover supporters are AFSC and Save On Foods. Our Silver Clover supporters Oh, sorry, uh, wrong screen. Silver Clover supporters, just give it a second to change, um, was the service equipment. And Bronze Clover supporter for this program is Alberta Beef Producers. Green Clover sponsors uh, is Genome Alberta. Uh, we're, we're happy to do DNA's testing and they're the ones who get us, got us started on that. And our 4-H Canada national partners are Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, EASF, Bayer Crop Science, Bayer, Bayer Canada, uh, F FCC, Syngenta, and TransCanada. So thank you to our supporters. They make our programs possible. And with that, I think we'll jump into Oscar if he's ready to, to give his, his presentation. Oh, and just a few pictures of, of last year's wrap-up day when we were able to gather in person. So Oscar, if you're ready. Yes. Uh, Perfect. Um, do I need Thanks. to stop sharing my screen so you can share yours? Sure, absolutely. There we go. I'm going to share. Oh, I, you have to allow me, uh, Lexi, oh, to share I? my screen. Yes. Oh. Now you should be able now. to. I thought I had done that. Sorry. Oh, no, no worries. Sure. Okay. Oh, so. Oscar, Oscar, oh, no, you're yeah. good. You're good. I'm good. Okay. 
Thank you, first of all. Uh, it's a pity that we cannot meet uh, face to face together and have uh, the wrap up in, in a nice place in Central Alberta of the many that we have. <laughs> so it's a pity this year, but uh, hopefully next year everything comes to, to normal status <laughs> or whatever is going to be the, the normality and, and we can meet together and, and do this wrap up and this meeting. Uh, face to face, and uh, we can see each other and, and, and you know talk to each other. So uh, first of all, uh, I, I want to say big thanks. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this competition. It's it's a great pleasure. I really enjoy uh, this competition. Uh, this year, of course, I, I was missing you know the part uh, of the what I call Carcass One Hundred One. You know, meeting after the evaluation with the kids and going through all the details and questions. Anyhow, it's, it's a pity, so I, hopefully next year we can do it, but thanks again for uh, giving me the opportunity to judge uh, uh, these carcasses. Also, I want to thanks, uh, I want to thank you, Alexia and, and Rod, for coordinating all the things and helping me uh, all the way uh, through the evaluation and the trips uh, to the plants. Thank you for, for the plants for making things so easy for me and all those that they were helping me recording or at the plan or somehow facilitating the things to, to make things easier for, for the evaluation. Uh, big thanks to, to everyone. So now moving into the overview of grading, just uh, very briefly, I'm going to give an overview about uh, what uh, carcass evaluation and grading in, can in Canada entails. So, grading, uh, what, uh, what uh, grading means? So, grading, a grading system uh, plays uh, carcasses with similar characteristics into commercial groups. This is kind of for standards of quality, to establish standards of quality, and, to and the grading system provides also a measure of, of this quality and, and the yield, right? Why do we grade beef? Well, basically it's to create uniform groups of carcasses of similar quality and yield and value. So with the grading, we are gonna uh, create uh, uniform groups of carcasses. Also with the grading, it's gonna help the producer settlement or payments or the, the establish, establish the, the basis of this payment based on the grading. Also, the grading system provides a more consistent and predictable product for consumers. So, because we are creating uniform groups, that uh, they are they are gonna be uh, uh, they are gonna have some uh, quality standards. Those groups are gonna be more consistent. The carcass or the product that we are uh, making groups, it's gonna be more consistent and. Um, a predictable product for, for the consumers, right? Also, one of the, some of the purpose of grading is that uh, based on grading, you can take uh, breeding decisions to improve the herd and, and achieve uh, what the market needs uh, or, or the, market is, the market is requesting. So through the grading, we can make some breeding decisions. We can promote the product because, you know, uh, having a prime, uh, the, the name of a prime on, on, on your carcass, it's gonna for sure, you know, impact the, the consumer, right? The, the consumer is gonna understand what prime means, right? And uh, it's, it's gonna promote that product. And also facilitate the trade. Why uh, is facilitating the trade? Well, with the grading system, with the quality standards or the name of the classes, either prime, triple A, double A, or single A, you know, uh, we know uh, either uh, producers, uh, packers, or consumers, we know what we are uh, uh, trading or what we are uh, buying, right? So it's gonna provide, the grading is gonna provide a common language. So the grading systems are developed and fine-tuned to maintain market competitiveness. So through the grading systems, we can create uniform groups, consistent products. We can promote a product that it's gonna uh, help with the uh, competitiveness of, of the product. 
in Canada, uh, the grading systems are delivered by the Canadian Beef Grading Agency. Right? That's the it's a no it's a non for profit uh, agency and is who is delivering the, the grading services. Within the Canadian Beef Grading Systems, we have a key factors that we evaluate, right? Or key traits in, uh, of the carcass. We evaluate those factors in the carcass. And those key factors are going to have an impact or influence on the quality or yield, right? Those factors, they are going to have some uh, influence or impact in the carcass quality or yield. So for instance, we evaluate the age, the maturity of the carcass, which it has an impact on the tenderness. We evaluate the sex, which also has an impact on the, or influence on the tenderness. We evaluate the conformation, muscling, muscling that is gonna also uh, have impact in the yield. We evaluate the fat color, texture, texture and cover, which it's gonna have impact in the acceptability and yield. And also we evaluate uh, the, during the grading prof procedures, the meat color, textures and marbling, which it has acceptability, impact and, and, and quality. Here, you can see the uh, carcass quality segregation chart. This is uh, the diagnostic tree, right, that uh, we follow at the time of uh, the grading evaluations. So based on our key factors, uh, the, car the, the grading system is based, on, is based on a series of pass and fail tests, right? So the carcass is gonna be evaluated on those factors and it's gonna pass or not, right? If no, it's going to be downgrade, or let's say it's going to be segregated into different uh, grades, right? So, for instance, if we evaluate the carcass in terms of maturity and we consider, or the evaluation is that it's a mature cow, then that uh, carcass is going to be segregated into the D grades, cool cows. In our case, for our competition, uh, oops, sorry, for our competition, here is uh, the part of the chart that we are gonna follow. Okay? So to get the top grade, you have to pass all the tests up to the marbling where the carcass is gonna be evaluated in terms of marbling. So we have to evaluate the age first, mat mature or youthful, then we are gonna evaluate the sex. If it, if it is too masculine, then it's gonna be segregated into the E grade or a steel or heifer. Within the steroid heifers, we are going to evaluate the conformation. If it is deficient, then it's going to be downgraded into the degrade or well muscle, fat color, yellow or uh, white fat, a mid color texture and marbling. Then we are going to evaluate the mid color if it is a dark cutter before downgrade or bright red. And then at the end, we evaluate the marbling, right? That's the last step within the, the quality grade evaluation. So very, very briefly, here you have an example of where we uh, evaluate the maturity of the carcass. Here you have a youthful carcass. As you can see in the caps of the thoracic uh, spine, you know, uh, spine ribs, uh, not the ribs, the, thoracic, the spine, the thoracic caps, you can see that there is cartilage, right? Those, that cartilage is telling us that it's a youthful uh, carcass. While here you have already hard bone. That is gonna uh, tell us, or uh, we are gonna evaluate that carcass as a, a mature carcass. Also at the lumbar uh, spinous process, we can evaluate if it is a youthful carcass, as you can see here, right? With uh, this cartilage over here, and it, a red line, it's uh, dictating that it's a Youthful carcass, while well, here we have hard bone in that lumbar process, lumbar vertebrae, right? So those are the places where we uh, look to evaluate the maturity. We also are gonna evaluate the sex. Uh, so we are looking for, uh, a, you know, youth, a youthful carcass, but uh, with no secondary traits or not, we are not looking for pronounced masculinity, right? So here you have an acceptable male, where here you have a carcass with a pronounced masculinity that will be downgraded to a 
Canada E class, right? Here you can see the crest, and also you can see a pronounced masculinity with a, a, a big erectile muscle. Okay. So here are the, the, the place or where we look for the pronounced masculinity. The next thing is the fat color. Uh, it is, uh, the carcass is white. We evaluate if it is white or yellow. In this case, an acceptable carcass is uh, white, while yellow is gonna be downgraded into the V2. We also evaluate the fat cover, you know, at, at least it has to have the carcass more than two millimeters at, uh, over the back fat at the ribeye, at the great side. And we are looking for an homogeneous fat cover all the way. Here you have an insufficient fat cover. We also evaluate the external fat thickness. As I said, we are looking for more than two millimeters of back fat, at least two millimeters and at least a marbling traces, right? To be a single layer, at least, right? So those are the things to be acceptable at, at this point. If uh, there is less than two millimeters, which this is the case, and not even traces of marbling, then the carcass is gonna be downgraded to, to big one. Then also we are uh, evaluating the conformation of the carcass. We evaluate uh, its conformation. So an acceptable carcass is that one with the round profiles. You can see here a strong carcass, big muscling, great muscling, while here there is a lack of, of muscling, right? We also evaluate the meat and fat texture, right? When, when it's not firm, when the meat is not firm, that will be downgraded as well. We are looking for a firm lean at the ribeye, okay? As you know, we evaluate the color of the lean at the great side. Here you have a red cherry ribeye, while here you have a dark cutter, right? Very clear, it's a dark cutter, so will be downgraded to before. This is a quality issue, right? And then if the carcass has passed all those uh, tests and evaluation uh, successfully, then the last step is to evaluate the marlin. You already might not, might already familiar with the marlin cards, right? This is the, uh, less than this is called traces. Right? We don't have a picture or a standard or pictorial standard for this, but it's a single A. Then we have the card that is a slide for double A's. We have for triple A's the small, modest, and moderate. And uh, when the carcass or the ribeye uh, resembles to these cards, which is slightly abundant and moderately abundant, this is a prime. These cards, these pictorial standards, are dictating the marlin. So basically we compare these cards against the, the, the ribeye of the carcass. Remember that uh, all these evaluations are done or are performed uh, between the 12th and the 13th rib. So we have to rip the carcass between the 12th and the 13th to do all this evaluation. Okay, once we have evaluated the marlin, the next step for these carcasses, the top series, the top A series, those are the top A series, single A, double A, triple A, prime, are gonna be evaluate, evaluated in terms of retail cut yield. This is, uh, this uh, retail cut yield was uh, implemented uh, in 2019, uh, January 15, and uh, is harmonized with the United States uh, yield, right? So the retail cut yield, here is the definition of the retail cut yield percentage. Retail cut yield percentage, what is what we estimate, is an estimation of closely trimmed, half inch, fat or less, boneless retail cuts from the major four primal cuts, round, loin, rib, and chuck, derived from the carcass. So basically, we are estimating the percentage of these primal cuts round that are boneless, closely trimmed, right? That's the estimation of the retail cut yield. Four big primals, round, loin, rib, and chuck, boneless, 
closely trimmed. So that's what the retail cut yield percentage is telling you. So when you have a 50% of retail cut yield, it's telling you that that carcass is gonna harvest 50% of these primals, boneless, closely trimmed. That's the 50% that you are gonna harvest for, for, from that carcass. So uh, this procedure uh, that the grader uses to estimate retail cut yield was developed uh, in the United States and uh, it was adapted by Lacombe Research and Development Center and it was implemented in January 2009. So I'm gonna explain you very briefly, uh, very, uh, briefly uh, how, how those uh, estimations are done. So this is the ruler that we use to do the yield estimation, the retail cut yield estimation. So basically we are gonna measure the width and the length of the ribeye. And with that width and that length that we measure with this part of the ruler. So this is to measure the width and this is to measure the length. So if the ribeye width goes from here to this green dot is two. If it is shorter than that, it's a one. And if it is larger than that, it's a three for the width. The same concept for the length. This is the length at the maximum point, right? So if the ribeye length is shorter than this green dot over here, it's a one. If the length touches this green dot from here to there, from there to there, then it's a two and larger length is a three. With those numbers of the width and the length, we are gonna go to this matrix are we, and we are gonna obtain the muscle score. So let's say that this ribeye has a width of two and a length of three, let's say. Two and a length of three, we're here. Two, three, we go over here. Two and a three makes a muscle score of three. With this number, we are gonna go into this chart over here, right? We are gonna keep this three over here. Now we are gonna measure the back fat thickness, okay? And with the back fat thickness, we use, <laughs> hello? Okay. With the back fat thickness, we are gonna use this part of the ruler and we are gonna get a fat class. Fat class that we are gonna apply in this part of the ruler with our muscle score and our fat class, let's say that we have the muscle score of three and a fat class of five. Okay, that carcass is gonna harvest 51.1% of retail cut kill, right? All this matrix is coming or defined by this equation. And depending on the percentage that the carcass is uh, uh, getting or, or, or estimated, then the carcass is gonna fall into the different um, yield classes or yield grades. Here you have Canada one, two, three, four, depending on the percentage of the retail cut yield. Here you have the classes. Class one is this region over here. Class two is this sector of the ruler. Class three, class four, class five, right? This over here is linear carcasses. These over here are overfinished carcasses, right? That's uh, how the ruler works. So to clarify uh, about uh, the difference between the former GIL and the current GIL, let's put an example. We, are the, we have the hindquarter and we are gonna get the round dissected. From that round, we are gonna get closely trimmed retail cuts, boneless, closely trimmed. See over here, that's what we call the retail cut yield from the round, from the round, sorry, right? This is the retail cut yield from the round. And then the, the, the former uh, yield estimation in our grading system, it was uh, the estimation of the limit yield. Here, as you can see, that's the total limit yield. So those are the difference. 
the current uh, yield estimation includes some subcutaneous fat. Remember, it's closely trimmed, half inch. So it's going to include some subcutaneous fat, intermuscular fat, sim fat. So in this yield evaluations, the retail cut yield, those are the, is the lean, is the some back fat and, uh, or subcutaneous fat, intermuscular and sim fat. While the former one, it was only lean meat yield, what we estimate. Those are the main difference, right? Between the former and the current uh, GL uh, definitions. Okay, so thinking in these competitions, these kind of rules, you know, uh, if you tell me, okay, if you are following the guidelines of this competition, what are you looking for? If you are walking into the store and you want to buy an steak, following the rules of this competition. So basically you have here two examples that I got in my, uh, from my databases. You can see these both are kind of a high, medium to high triple A's. Like we are talking about modest, like 500 uh, and some, 520 or 510, something like that. So I mean, it's a kind of nice marbling uh, in the ribeye. You can see a nice marbling, but at the same time, you know, it's achieving, you know, the efficiency of the process. So you don't see much back fat over here, right? And I'm telling you, uh, this, is, uh, this is the back fat. It wasn't torn, it was intact subcutaneous back fat. So you can see over here, maybe it's gonna be eight millimeters, nine millimeters, right? No much waste. You are not gonna have much waste at the time of processing this carcass. And then it's a nice uh, ribeye with nice marbling, you know? So you are over there, you are crossing the dots in both marbling-wise quality, you are getting a kind of a high triple A and also back fat. The same here, nice uh, ribeye, not huge, not small, like it's the perfect size. I think it's around, well, I don't remember, I don't want to talk and recall, but it was around 90, 80, something like that. Nice ribeye, nice marbling on it, and that's the back, back thickness. There is no much waste. It's not over finish, mm. right? So. If you ask me, those are, for this kind of competition purpose, those are a nice uh, uh, stage that I, I would like to have for, for dinner, right? So that's an example. Here, I know that, uh, you know, there are in this slide, there is a lot of information, but uh, because of this presentation is recorded, you are gonna have the chance to go through them. But basically it's a summary of the 13 quality beef grades. Here are the 13, quality beef grades that we have, and the different uh, characteristics of each uh, grade, right? These top ones, these are the A series, the top grades in, in terms of quality. Those are the ones that are uh, evaluated or uh, estimated in terms of yield, right? Those are the ones that are gonna have a yield estimation. These are called the downgrades, although I don't really like to talk about downgrades because this carcass, maybe they don't make this, but these are, can be marketed in a different way. So still are really good carcasses. For instance, the big ones are good carcasses, and uh, you know, good to excellent with uh, some deficiencies, but are good carcasses that they can uh, uh, make quite profit in, in, in other markets that is not North America, for instance, in Europe, right? So, but basically this is a summary of all the 13 quality beef grades. And I want to finish with the couple definitions about grading. So the assessment of carcass merit is complex and no single approach or set of criteria will ideally suit all the objectives. Basically the grading that we are using in North America maybe is not the best grading for Europe or for, or for Australia. So depending on the markets, they, there are different criteria. Those criteria are following the trends of the market and what the consumers are looking for, right? So the grading systems are in a continuous evolution. They evolve to meet uh, those uh, market needs or requirements. 
And again, grading system grading has to group carcass in order or in order of excellence in accordance with the needs of the group. So that's are the, the, the main things or an overview, brief overview about the, the, the grading. Again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thanks a lot. I turn to Lexi. <laughs> Awesome, thank you, Oscar. And thank you, Oscar, for being our grader for four years now. Oscar's been with us from, from the get-go. So he, he's, he's very knowledgeable in how we do our competition, um, in addition to being a very knowledgeable uh, grader. So it's with that, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, with that, I will turn it over to Rod uh, to do a brief overview of our competition. Rod is our committee chair for the 4-H Alberta Steer Carcass Competition. Um, and actually, along with all of our committee members, who I'll introduce um, in just a little bit uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, has been involved with us again right from the get-go. So lots of time and effort, and he definitely understands um, what's going on behind the scenes here. So Rod, your turn. Thank you. Just want to check that uh, my screen is showed up there so everyone good, can play yeah. uh, Markov and X on their uh, Zoom meeting bingo as we go <laughs> forward. Um, Thanks again. I just just wanted to say a couple of words about uh, about Oscar and and uh, like you mentioned, he's he's been with us since the the beginning, and and Ro uh, Oscar is actually a research scientist with uh, Alberta Agriculture out of Le the Lacombe Research Station and. and has brought a lot of information and, and uh, has really been a, a sounding board for the committee as we've been reviewing the criteria, making uh, uh, changes or developing the criteria when we first started out to make sure that it was a fair and, and uh, equitable uh, competition for everyone that was involved with it. One of the things that, that I really, really admire about uh, Oscar is that uh, he wants to be transparent about how everything is, is done. And it's unfortunate that this year we weren't able to go to the abattoirs and actually see him how he does his grading. He wants to show everyone that he's trying to be fair to everyone and ensuring that everyone understands what's going on through that through the process. And unfortunately this year uh, it didn't happen, but hopefully next year we can get back into that type of a, a format where uh, members can actually see how it's being graded and, and uh, that transparency is, is there for all. And the last thing is that Oscar makes it to all of our different facilities, seven this year. And one of the most important things for us is consistency uh, and ensuring that uh, they're all graded equally and, and Oscar just does an awesome job with all of that. So uh, I'd really like to thank Oscar for, for the four years that he's been, been with us and uh, uh, we're certainly hoping that he's gonna continue on next year and, and help us again. So with that, I'm gonna start into the, uh, the, the sort of the summary, I guess. Basically what I've done is, is taken the 2020 results and compared them to the last three years that we've been running the competition. Just a quick, simple average, just to give you an idea how this year actually compares with uh, last the last three years. So competition numbers this year, you can see the 47 animals completed, uh, 21 in the south, two Calgary, west central seven, east central three, northeast was two, northwest was eight, and, and four up in the piece. How does that compare with the rest? The first year that we did this as the 100 year celebration, we had uh, 58 uh, completed and I believe uh, the lowest that we've had is just right in around the 40. So we're right in the middle of everything and, and we're certainly happy that the members that participated this year came out and, and uh, were able to complete the project. So the next one here, uh, marbling. And what we're looking at here is uh, I, I think it was maybe a little difficult year feeding. Uh, previously, we've had quite a nice distribution of, you know, A right through to uh, AAA threes. And, and this year, it seemed like everyone was uh, having a hard problem getting these animals over into the AAA category with uh, 32 actually grading uh, just double A's. So it, it that's, that indicates to me that it may have been a little bit of a, of a difficult year uh, feeding, maybe the weather or, or the feed quality or something, something changed when we're looking at a different uh, distribution compared to the previous years. Yield wise, I can't compare that to the previous years because as Oscar has just explained, we've gone from a, a Y1, 2 and 3 
to uh, one through five this year. So the distribution on that, uh, again, with the A2, uh, the, the um, looks like 20, 28 animals were grading there as Y2, eight as Y1s, and then we fall off onto six as Y3 and, and uh, three as Y4s. Uh, none of the animals were grading Y5, so gives us an idea on, on where we are at. So next year we can do a comparison and, and see how the grading uh, yield grades uh, stack up to that this year. So the ribeye size, uh, we did see a bit of a shift on that. Uh, Again, pretty even distribution. There are some, some big boys in there that had uh, over 100 centimeters square uh, uh, ribeye size, and, but most of them were in that 70 to 90 range is where the majority of them, and basically that's the same as has happened in the past. So very similar type of animals being selected and, and uh, with the feeding regimes, they're coming into about the same type of uh, ribeye size with respect to that. Fat thickness, uh, it seems like that six to 10 uh, range millimeters, whether it be previous years or this year's are, is, is sort of the, the sweet spot where everyone's, what everyone's getting to. Um, that two to five, you know, we're, we're looking at seven previously to, to the 12. I would say that's pretty, pretty evenly split with, uh, with respect to that and, and whether it be 2020 or the previous year. So they're, they're very, very similar. Warm carcass weights um, this year. And, and the reason why I'm saying that uh, we may have had a little bit harder, uh, harder time feeding is that some of them were a little bit smaller uh, under the 600 uh, pounds. And uh, virtually the majority of them were right in the, in the sweet spot of that 650 to 750 pounds. And that corresponds with, uh, with the distribution between uh, 2017 and 2019 averages. So again, very similar, but it looked like they, we were having some that were maybe a little bit smaller this year compared to, compared to the other years. So with that, the, the committee struggles with, with what, what's the best? And uh, what's the best carcass? What's the best ribeye? And we're putting these numbers together. And really, the, the, the winners of this competition are, are the animals that are absolutely able to hit the top notches in each of those categories. So we can't predict how those are going to happen. But that's kind of how we're getting the, the, uh, the ability to do this. And I think what's important, uh, a wise person once told me that it's, it's not necessarily the grade. It's, it's how the people that are actually consuming these are enjoying uh, what's put on their plate. And I think that's an important thing for all of us to remember that we have to ensure that we're doing the best possible job that we can to put uh, the best quality product on, on the plate, whatever that may be, uh, whatever that market may be. And so whether it's a, a steak like this that uh, you know, a family of 12 can eat or whether it's something that you're going to enjoy at a high, high end restaurant. I think that's what we have to be looking at. So I also want to go through some, some thank yous too. Um, the carcass committee uh, started off last year at about this time, uh, working hard to make sure that we could actually have the criteria out by the end of September. So uh, I'd like to thank them, Carrie, Terry, uh, Lyndon, uh, myself and Lexi, and, and also an honor honorable mention to Yvonne Uramcio who helped us out with a lot of additional uh, Zoom meetings to put this together. Uh, without this, uh, it, it, uh, the, the competition just wouldn't have gone forward. So thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank this year we added the the uh, webinars to that so I'd like to like to also thank Dr. Susan Marcus for the DNA and and hopefully you were able to to take that in as well as Diane Finstadt and uh, Jordi Buba and the marketing I think that uh, that also added a nice component to to the competition this year as well so 4-H um, you know, I, I want to say thank you to them and the sponsors, and and they took a took a risk on us for uh, a three year pilot of this competition. And I think that as we as we move forward, we've seen new people come in, we've seen uh, others that have been with us since the beginning, and I think that that's just a a great uh, way to 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 move a, a competition forward on the provincial scale. So the other one, members, parents. Uh, 
you know, it, it, it's been a challenging year for everyone and I'm glad that you've stuck it out with us and, and I hope that you stick with us uh, moving forward. But I also like to thank the competition recorders because of the restrictions that we had. Uh, they were the ones that uh, took the numbers down and, and as you listen to Oscar going through, there's a lot of numbers being thrown, thrown around in a very short period of time. So they have to be very, uh, very precise and very quick to, to do that. And also to the, the people that were taking the pictures for the animals of the carcasses so that we could get them back to the members and to, to have them put up in their presentations. And lastly, I've, I've kind of given Oscar a, a, a brief uh, thank you at the beginning, but you have to realize Oscar doesn't charge us for, for actually grading. So he does that all on his own time. We cover his expenses and um, just realize he's, he's covered just about 4,000 kilometers uh, this year alone to, to do all these seven abattoirs. So that's just about uh, from, from Edmonton to uh, just about up to Alaska to, 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 that he's driven. So again, we, we couldn't do this competition with, without Oscar. And like I said, transparency and consistency is important to him and, and it certainly shows in this competition. So next year, uh, after this is all said and done, uh, the committee is going to start working on 2021 20, 20, preparations. We're going to be discussing this with 4-H Alberta, making sure that the committee and uh, everything that we've been done continues on for the following year. Uh, the committee members uh, are, are uh, wanting to, to make sure that, that it continues and we'll be, be making sure of that. And we, we're also inviting, you know, if there's other people out there that are interested in being on the committees that we'd certainly like to talk to them as well, uh, just to ensure that, that uh, we get all the information coming back. And it's important for, for members uh, to, to actually contact us. If there's something that you like, dislike, or want to see change, contact the committee members. Uh, we, we're more than happy to, to discuss them with you and, and uh, determine how we can make this competition better. Uh, evaluations are gonna be sent out here shortly. Lexi will be sending them out uh, to all the members that will participate it and, and we invite that feedback. That's how we know uh, whether changes need to be made or, and or if, if uh, there, there's uh, things that are happening that, that we should be looking at that we can't see all the time. So please make sure that those evaluations are, are put forward as fast as you can. So watch for the competition criteria in September. Uh, the latter part of September, we wanna have that out so that everyone can be looking through their pastures right now that are nice and green, hopefully not underwater and uh, selecting that steer for, for next year's competition. So thanks for uh, different, but a great year. Um, as it's been alluded to, uh, Kerry uh, worked really, really hard to have a great uh, wrap up for us, uh, a great tour and everything like that. We're hoping that next year we're gonna be able to put that into play and, and uh, be able to tour that and, and do this all in person next year, um, just so that we can, uh, we can have a face-to-face -face and, and uh, everyone can answer the questions that, uh, that they may have in person and just has that, uh, that final, uh, uh, final wrap up feeling that uh, is, is a little bit more personable than it is online. But again, thanks for a great year. So I'm going to turn it back uh, to Lexi, Terry, Carrie to do the results. So thanks again. Awesome. Thank you, Rod. That was thank you so much. <laughs> there are no words to, there not, there's a lot of thanks, I guess I should say, for, for um, everything you've done in the committees and as well as Oscar. So well done. With that, without further ado, if Carrie is ready to go, I'm ready to go. Um, I'll just share my screen again and just give me a quick second to, to get back organized. Um, all right, Carrie, if you're seeing my screen. You you? Perfect, so let's get started with these results. Are you ready? Oh yes, you can click, click away. All right, so who is second place in the South? So oh, actually, you know what, Carrie, before we get started, I'll do a quick overview. So what we're going to do, sorry, I should have said this. Okay. Um, we'll have pictures of the ribeye, the hanging, and then we'll go through and get the live picture um, so we can see what it was look like live. And on the left side of your screen, I know there's a lot of pictures on your screen, but on the left side of your screen, you'll see um, pictures of, of grading where when we were able to meet in person to talk 
um, about the carcasses. So just we'll go through these, but no, it is being recorded and you are able to go back and take a, a much deeper look at these. So we'll do top two from each region and then top five over the entire province. So Carrie, or yeah, your turn. All right. For second place in the South region, everybody can hear me, I hope. We're good. And is uh, Cade Woodruff of Seven Persons 4-H Beef. And there's his steer. We have pictures of his ribeye and his carcass there. So those pictures hopefully will get uh, sent out when we do our results sending out. So rolling on into first place in the south. There's a picture of the ribeye and the carcass and so on uh, hanging there. And that's Cheyenne Torgerson of Seven Persons 4-H Beef. And there's her live steer. Again, we'll just roll in along. We're gonna roll into the Calgary region. And here's second place with, uh, from Longview 4-H Beef, Aaron Hughes. So very similar pictures, rolling into, into first place from the, from the four, uh, Calgary region, Longview 4-H Beef, Emma Longson. And moving into West Central with second place, Peyton Vert of Central Lacombe 4-H Beef. And then in first place in this region, we have Rangeland 4-H Beef, Erica Mathon. Steer looks pretty big besides somebody so small. <laughs> Go to East Central. In second place, we have Cade Sherman from Hastings Cooley 4-H Beef. So then rolling in out of first place in East Central, Leighton McMahon, Hastings 4-H, Hastings Cooley 4-H Beef. Moving into the Northeast. Second place was a team, Quentin and Kate Albrecht from Holden 4-H Beef. First place was Rebecca Pashuk Pashulka. Sorry for butchering your last name, Rebecca. I hope you're on out of all the participants from uh, Miriam 4-H Beef and Multi Club. So we'll move on into the Northwest We have from Meadowview Multi 4-H, Shelton Grabler. Congratulations, Shelton. Coming in first from the same club, Karsten, Karsten Grabler. Very similar carcasses. In the Peace region, second place, Bailey Richardson from Montney 4-H Multi-Club. And, and in first place in that region is Kelton Sigger from the Savannah 4-H Multi-Club. So those are all the winners in all the regions. So now when you accumulate them, so out of those 10, or those uh, 14, I guess, will be the winners. Fifth place. With, with 115 points, Leighton McMahon, Hastings Cooley 4-H Beef. In fourth place, this, is the, this was a tie with 115 points. It was broken by the grade, but using the protocols in the, in the contest, in the competition. Erica Mathon, Rangeland 4-H Beef. In third place, with 116 points, this is a very tight competition this year, Kelton Singer, Savannah 4-H Multi Club. Congratulations. And in second place, with, a, with 117 points, 
Rebecca Pashulka of Miriam 4HB Multi. And with 121 points, so that's not much of a spread all the way through from 121 to 115, is Cheyenne Torgerson of Seven Persons 4HB Club. And there's the five winners in the province. So as well, I wanted to say thanks to all the, all the people on the committee as well, and to Oscar. This is the largest, the biggest co uh, problem we have with competitions, and everybody knows that, is that is consistency. This, pro this competition offers nothing but consistency when you bring the same grader across the entire province. There's no opinions, there's only facts. So what you see with the hide on may look different when the hide comes off. And that's why this project has got so much traction and should be promoted so widely is because of the, the, the facts that go with it. So one grader, one method, no opinion, only facts. And like uh, Rod and, and Lexi alluded to, I really was uh, hoping to take everybody on a tour and I hope that uh, next year that we get more competitors because the, the place, the facility that we were going to be able to tour and we went and toured it already was going to be fantastic. And the, the hosts, they believe in doing nothing but supporting 4-H kids. And his, one of his comments in there when we did our tour was this is for kids. If the parents don't get to see it, that's uh, we'll have to work around that. But this is kids first. So hopefully next year, this is more of a, a hook to get you back in and your friends and so on, because the tour would have been fantastic. I'll hand it back to you, Lexi. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. And you're right. It was absolutely fantastic. So one more thing we don't get to do this year. So um, we'll give you guys a couple minutes if there's any questions. Oscar's more than willing to answer questions. And I'm, I'm, I am as well. And so is Rod and the rest of the committee. If there are any questions, feel free to use the question and answer um, component at the bottom. Uh, that way we won't, won't lose them in the chat if there's any chat happening. Uh, Rod also commented, congratulations to all competitors. Absolutely. Uh, we know how much work it is to raise this year. Uh, with that, I'll do a, while you're thinking of your questions, if you have any, I'll just do another um, quick sponsor highlight and then we'll get to your questions. So yeah, congratulations to everybody. And so just our 2020 4-H Alberta sponsors, our Emerald Clover supporters are the Alberta Recycling, Altalink, ATV, Calgary Stampede Foundation, and UFA. Our Gold Clover sponsors or supporters are AFSC and Save On Foods. Silver Clover is service equipment. Bronze Clover is the Alberta beef producers. Our Green Clover is Genome Alberta. And our 4-H Canada national partners are Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, BASF, Bayer, FCC, Syngenta, and TransCanada. And with that, um, do we have any questions coming in? I don't see any. No questions, hey? You know, a question that always seems to come up but doesn't get put in print is, why do we select the size of carcass that we select when other people have said it's all in, the, like Rod said, it's all in the uses, what you will expect and what you want to use it for. The biggest reason this committee, and I'll sp I'm speaking on behalf of all of us, I hope, is that we chose the weight break is because when you take that ribeye and cut it into off of a certain carcass weight, which is the one we selected, and cut a, a one inch thick steak, you will end up with a 12 to 14 ounce ribeye, which is brings premium at places at the steakhouses. And that's why we chose the weight we are because everybody says we should feed them to make them huge. But that's not what we're trying to teach people. You feed them to make them sold. All right. All right, folks. Well, I'm not really seeing any questions here. Are there any uh, closing comments from from Rod or from Rod or Oscar? I see a lot of thank yous coming up on the uh, on the webinar chat right now, and and uh, you're welcome. I think that from the on behalf of the committee that uh, we feel that it's a beneficial program that uh, is a little differently or a little different from the from the traditional show, and um, 
when we first started the competition, we actually had the, the competition or the, the comment that they, they appreciated that they didn't have to go into the show ring. And we realized that the show ring's not for everyone. But I think it's a great learning opportunity for uh, for members and parents uh, alike and to to actually see what uh, what these animals uh, we're producing do. So with that, um, you know, my my closing comment is: please fill in the uh, evaluations. Mm -hmm. That helps us to to move forward with the program, and um, have a great summer. Um, I know that that things aren't uh, the nicest out there, but make the best of it. So thank you. Thanks, Rod. Oscar, any closing comments? No, just uh, again uh, saying thank you for being part, uh, allowing me to be part of, of this competition. It's, it's great. Although this year is, it was not uh, as used to, but well, looking forward for the next year. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, folks, that's all we've got for you today. Uh, this is recorded and we will be putting it up on YouTube a little bit later and you'll get an email with this as well as the evaluation. Thank you.